Monday the 18th of November, just gone 8 o'clock here in London. Hope everyone had a, uh, a good weekend uh, after recovering from that absolute unbelievable interview uh, on BBC uh, by the Prince. It was uh, pretty incredible uh, to see uh, how that went. Uh, something a bit more smooth sailing stocks all-time highs again this morning you can see the S&P just printing uh, here now 31.24 pushing to that new all-time high the Nasdaq uh, a decent push higher as well getting to 8,365 and the Dow Jones first time above 28,000 better get those 30,000 hats back on sale because this market is uh, continuing to push higher. In in summary of, of last week, before we get on to uh, the headlines from uh, the, over the weekend that are driving price, it, it really was, was dealt with uh, any negative comments on stocks as uh, just brushed off, just brushed off. You can see here, this is really the, the last sort of, well, few trading sessions and you can see whenever there's a, a move lower that buy the dip is to support back whether you want to call it FOMO when you whether you want to believe that uh, we are going to get this phase one deal uh, and uh, it would be smooth selling from from then on or not this market has continued to go higher so any negative comment met with positive uh, <coughs> a bit later and those negative comments not really doing too much to the market Elsewhere, oil uh, on Friday got to the top part of that range. I wouldn't you know, be getting too carried away unless we close above this area. Uh, the, the headlines are very much looking at this on the, the positive side of things, but when you take it back to the month of November, we're pretty much bang on completely flat. Uh, in, and uh, Well, I guess at the top of the range, but a couple of positive comments from Barkindo uh, brushed off a, a bearish DOE, and we also had uh, some positive spin uh, regarding OPEC uh, later on uh, as well. So we're up to the top of that range. The pound has been uh, relatively strong this morning and that's continued from sort of bottoming out of the middle, uh, well, of the 8th uh, and the 11th of November and we're now back above 129 uh, confirmed on Friday and this morning up to 129.63 on the futures. Despite some relatively negative uh, headline uh, data releases last week brushed aside as expected uh, as the Conservatives, certainly on the polls anyway, uh, look to be in control and that Conservative majority uh, to be looking a bit more priced in now. We do have, of course, tomorrow the first live debate uh, on ITV uh, tomorrow evening, uh, just before I'm a Celebrity gets, gets started again, which I'm sure everyone's really excited about. Having a look over as well, Euro, um, just going to highlight the uh, 7 a.m. release that we saw Thursday, Germany avoiding recession. Uh, we did then make a, a new low just after that, but we have pushed quite nicely from almost hitting 110 on the futures. I know we hit it pretty much on the spot and we've uh, recovered to what's a, a quite an interesting level. It was the breakdown on the 7th, the high then of the 8th, uh, and we're just trying to have another go at testing this level. This area will be quite key, I feel, not just today, but uh, for the week as well. Whether we can hold there today or not uh, will be important. If not, and the bears start taking control again, well, we could be looking for new lows to come through. Having a, a look, really, product by product, uh, we'll, we'll sort of have a, a run through of the, of the data calendar and uh, obviously what's going to be important this week. You would have received uh, or seen on Twitter, I should say, uh, the, the Canada highlights for the week ahead uh, that, uh, that Anthony would have put together. Um, and you can just see Monday on the data front, pretty quiet. Tuesday, the same. Not really expecting too much in the way of big market moves uh, to, to come through here. Uh, Wednesday, uh, is where you also get the FOMC minutes. So by then the, the RBA, FOMC, Thursday you get the, the ECB minutes, which is kind of the most exciting thing for that middle part and beginning before we get some data points in the afternoon out of the US uh, and morning from the, the UK and, and Europe. Friday a lot better uh, as you get those manufacturing and services PMI numbers out of Europe uh, and the UK, which really will potentially just data-wise be the main driver of the week. Of course, that then comes at the back end of the week 
but in the build up towards that not expecting too many fireworks uh, from a data front. We had a lot of Fed speak last week, didn't really do too much in the way of a, of a shock to markets. Uh, and ahead of the, the minutes on Wednesday for the FOMC, that kind of, in my opinion, makes that a bit of a non-event. Having a look over at the euro then, considering where we're trading now, pretty key. Uh, the dollar index itself down slightly uh, this morning, uh, helped by the fact that the euro has been pushing higher and obviously the pound also. So where we're trading will be uh, important. Looking at the, the US side of things here, other than the FOMC minutes, um, I, I don't think it's gonna be that much of a, a data-driven um, uh, product, uh, not just on the, on the Euro side uh, against the dollar, but all dollar pairs in general. I think we've had a, a good couple of weeks for, for the dollar, maybe uh, the, the last couple of days, including today, just a bit of respite from that. Wait and see what power says, if it's in line, and they are on this pause, well, maybe the dollar has to start to, to strengthen again. Uh, remains to be seen uh, what, what power says on Wednesday, or what uh, is derived from those minutes on Wednesday uh, this week, I should say. Uh, Data-wise, on the euro front, uh, is all about Friday. All going all gonna to be about the, the manufacturing and services, PMI numbers from France, Germany, and then the, the EU. So that morning on Friday should be a good one. Uh, if you remember last uh, couple of times, are we going to now start to see a bit of a recovery as some points are maybe suggesting, or um, are we actually going to see these numbers disappoint and then the euro could well be on the low of the week following that. So the market's expecting a marginal rebound in the manufacturing gorge, uh, stemmed perhaps by trade wars or, or trade talks getting better. Uh, you're going to see a lot of that if trade talks do start to, to get good, you'll get uh, global growth upgraded, you'll get central banks being more hawkish. Um, so until then, uh, it seems uh, that uh, we perhaps are going to get a more positive spin on things over the next couple of weeks. A few ECB speakers as well to be aware of this week, most notably, uh, as you can see from that calendar, Lagarde on Friday uh, speaking. Um, however, uh, a lot of her focus so far has been on team building exercises. Uh, so it'd be a bit of a shock to markets to see if anything significant came through from her or anyone else that is really speaking. So in summary for the Euro, uh, Friday will be important. You've got the ECB and FOMC minutes, which of course could move things, but not really expecting too much from that. As we know, the, the ECB minutes are very rarely a, a market mover uh, and the FOMC usually is just a spike one direction to reverse back. Having a, a look and moving on to the pounds, you may have seen uh, overnight a or this morning, uh, the main talking point other than the, the polls is that uh, Boris Johnson to woo businesses with tax breaks worth $1 billion. Sounding a bit like Dr. Evil there, but yeah, it's Boris Johnson looking to, to sue corporate Brex, uh, Britain on Monday by pledging to reduce business rates and provide a series of tax breaks worth about $1 billion a year. We've also had promises over the weekend and, and back end of, uh, of last week of uh, free Wi-Fi, was it, for, uh, for if Labour were to, to get in, although speaking to a couple of people, it just turns out that um, certainly those that are renting landlords will be able to increase their rent to incorporate that. So. Uh, as with anything, there'll be uh, a lot of scrutiny for all of these these pleas. And to be honest, I mean, I still personally see this as a, a second referendum happening right now. And uh, I think that's how both parties should go about it. Yes, you'll get some people looking into uh, these policies and these pledges. But um, really, it's a, a case of if Brexit, if you want Brexit that bad, Conservatives will be the more attractive, despite maybe their other policies. And if you don't, Labour uh, and Lib Dems. Uh, are maybe the, the way to go, despite Jeremy Corbyn over the weekend yesterday not quite clearly giving uh, an answer to whether he wants to leave or stay in uh, the EU. Uh, it seems more lean to the fact that we'll just put it to a, a people's vote, but he doesn't maybe suggest his absolute stance. So I think that's where he could be going wrong. However, Labour have started to recover a, a touch in the polls here. Uh, however, Conservatives at their highest level since 2017. So really, uh, you might have seen the comment just at the bottom there, uh, that uh, really since the, 
the election has been confirmed, both the, the main parties, the ones that have been in, uh, in power uh, really for the last hundred years are regaining some of that strength. So election day looking around 40% Conservative, 29% Labour. Uh, you know, for that, uh, the comment here that Anthony was mentioning that their highest level since 2017. Well, 2017 didn't go too well, as we know. So yes, the polls will shape things ahead of December and that will price in what's expected. Um, but that's not to say it is going to be a foregone conclusion uh, what the polls do say uh, there as well. So we have, uh, uh, going back to, to the pound, you can see at the moment what we're pricing in is nothing to do with the bad data, but more the fact that uh, uh, Boris Johnson has, has had this effect where the Conservatives have a nice lead uh, in the polls and that's resembled by, yes, a bit of a weaker dollar this morning, but overall uh, it, uh, that majority is, is starting to be priced in. So Tuesday, tomorrow will be key. Uh, the Friday data points from the PMIs as well will be uh, one to keep an eye on, looking for further manufacturing weakness there. But if last week and the previous weeks are anything to go by, uh, we're not going to see too much in the way of a reaction. Uh, you can see if I just highlight uh, the 7th here, let me just make sure that that is the right date. I'm looking for yet yeah, Thursday the 7th. That's the uh, the Bank of England uh, decision there. Remember it was 7-2, bit of a shock. Uh, price came back down and, and did the classic 2018-2019 central bank move, reversing that whole move. Uh, pretty much within 24 to 48 hours. A so decent recovery there, and, and since we have, then we have gone on. So data points, comments out of the, the MPC are not going to be the main drivers here. It's all going to be about the polls. It's all going to be about Brexit uh, going forward uh, as well. So first televised debate tomorrow between Johnson uh, and Corbyn will be really the highlight of the week. Uh, the general perception of who comes out as the winner may affect some markets' expectations. I personally would say at the time that it's going to be on, markets are going to be relatively illiquid. You get a couple of spikes either way. Long lasting effect from that? I'm not too sure. So uh, we'll have to see. Maybe the, the day after, the morning after, when you start to see uh, some polls come through, sure, that could move the, the pound. Uh, and at the moment, conservative majority pound strength, if Labour start clawing back some of the ground, well, you're going to see the pound have to unwind uh, a touch. Having a, a look elsewhere, currency-wise, Aussie dollar, uh, you can see the employment numbers on Thursday, really poor, really poor, and we, when we drifted lower, reaching 67.80 on the futures, and that was despite being as high uh, as a double top the uh, 24 hours prior to that, as the RBNZ kept rates on hold. Uh, so the poor employment number, what to keep an eye out for for the, the Aussie this week, where you've got those minutes, uh, as mentioned, that will be out overnight, so this time tomorrow we'll have those. Um, we'll, whether they uh, reiterate their sort of uh, pause as well, much like the RBNZ and, and the FOMC, where they've done three cuts this year but are looking to hold things or not, might be slightly tricky after that poor labour data. Uh, and also we have a period, just having a look through that calendar there, where there isn't too much data on the horizon, so this one might start to linger despite... Uh, if you look at the chart here, you could be forgiven for thinking there's a bit of a recovery. I would suggest this is more a bit of dollar weakness than Aussie strength. However, if we are to have positive trade developments, you could well see a, a recovery for that Aussie. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they say uh, on overnight on Tuesday uh, or overnight Monday, Tuesday morning, our time uh, for those minutes. Um, but the latest employment data likely makes the economic assessment in the minutes outdated. Uh, so that's just something to, to bear in mind. So limited reaction expected there, limited data out as well. So maybe the dollar side of things is going to be the driver and trade talks uh, as well. Mentioned oil, so we will have a, a look over that. Um, the headline uh, here kind of sums price up. Oil price steady after last week gains. Uh, but I, as, as mentioned, I wouldn't be getting too carried away with it because when you put in this back on that 60 minute, we're just at the top of that range. Put in it 240. Why is this level important? Well, you can go back here to just before October, the breakdown from the middle to end of September. We then push lower on the 24th. Uh, and this is the first real time we've had a, a strong test at really trying to get above it. Uh, whether we can close and get near that uh, 58 consistently will be key 
here. Uh, and then you can imagine a, a more swift move, perhaps, towards 59.14. It'll be interesting to see what you guys think on oil and, and Tim later on uh, as well. But for the moment, near that top end uh, of that uh, range. So we had those Barkindo comments in the afternoon <laughs> on the 13th, pushing price higher. We had a bearish DOE. Uh, and then Friday, we saw some strong gains uh, that got us up to the top there. A lot of this stemming from, as well, the positive trade talks as well, you know, US and China, the two biggest economies and also uh, the largest consumers um, uh, of oil in the world. So if those talks don't go too well, oil price, global growth is going to suffer. If they go well, well, oil price can push on. So maybe a case of let the trade talks do the talking. talking. You've got OPEC meeting on the 5th and 6th of December, uh, which of course will be worth keeping an eye on. But in the short term, US-China trade talks and that OPEC meeting in the early December will be the main two events that traders uh, will be keeping uh, an eye on there. And that's pretty much what this article is summarizing here. Uh, so little change so far uh, on Monday. It's relatively choppy up at the top. Um, you can see on the, on the chart there. Uh, so trade talks, OPEC uh, meeting 5th and 6th of December will be what I would be focusing on there now we get to the stocks all-time highs where is this gonna end well as long as the trade talks are good and uh, the fed aren't get, get, turning too hawkish well maybe it's going to continue for quite some time having a, a look here uh, just this morning uh, we did touch let me just get this may uh, high into then the new or what was the new all-time july high we have just come and approach and this trend line isn't perfect so I just need to bring it down a touch but it, it's something to bear in mind here because trying to pick a, a top on this technically is going to be hard you would have seen Friday the RSI is at the highest level since January 2018 and we all know what happened then uh, so keeping a, a watch on this trend line but last week if, if anything was to go by any negative comments aren't really being run to the ground here so while it, it certainly feels like there's going to be some sort of correction to, to come through because it's not just going to grind higher and higher and higher till the election. Trying to trying to you know, predict that is going to be tricky. So in the way of, of tackling this, I think the best thing to do is, is draw up your key, in this case, what was a resistance now support level. 3100 gives it that more technical psychological edge as well. It closed below there, then we can start looking down towards 3075, but unless price really um, has an a major negative comment you know I'm not looking to sell that unless we can close below 3100 it has to be said also <coughs> over the weekend Trump uh, saying hailing should we say hails cash to farmers US aid in China trade wars uh, here ahead uh, of Thanksgiving as well so to give them all a little Thanksgiving treat uh, is the way he wants to spin it um, however the, that money is actually part of a US government aid package. He went on to say, our government farmers will receive another major round of cash compliments of China tariffs. The smaller farms and farmers will be big beneficiaries. In the meantime, as you may have noticed, China is starting to buy big again. Japan deal done. Capital letters, enjoy. So as far as the Trump situation concerns, those trade talks are going well. People are buying again. China is buying again. The Japan deal is done. Uh, the, uh, the tariffs on Europe are delayed, as expected, but this is overall positive. Uh, and uh, in the world of stocks, there are all-time highs, and it seems unless we were to have a real breakdown, long may that continue. However, there is, of course, hope for the bears. If we go back to May, and we mentioned this on Friday, we did have the deal almost done and Trump pulled it last minute, and then we had an 8% move back down towards what was then a double bottom from the, the low that we had on uh, of 11th of March uh, before rallying on as well. So if you are bearish about this, there is a bit of hope. You have RSI, highest level since 2018. You have this trend line in the mix, and we have been here before where it didn't end too well. Um, remains to be seen, uh, I guess, going forward. I mentioned earlier about if uh, the trade talks do improve, Central banks are going to turn slightly more hawkish or more 
or less dovish, shall we say, but you also start getting uh, banks uh, seeing economic recovery in early 2020, uh, which is what Morgan Stanley are seeing. So they see a recovery on the cards, um, led by obviously trade talks recovering, reversing the downtrend of the past seven quarters as trade tension and monetary policy are easing simultaneously for the first time since the downtrend began. I personally wouldn't be getting too carried away about that because if trade talks are good, that easing monetary policy will not be there, um, which is why you feel maybe Trump still has that hawkish card in his pocket to use. So while stocks, yes, are going higher and with the current stance, that completely makes sense. This headline from Morgan Stanley just seems a bit backdated of a couple of weeks. I wouldn't be getting too overly excited uh, with that as well. Wednesday, uh, as mentioned, the FOMC minutes, I, I think from the amount of Fed speak last week, we're not expecting uh, too much from that um, to, to be a shock uh, and that pause just to be uh, you know, uh, reiterated yet again. So we'll, we will do a bit of a, a run through uh, on Wednesday for that, but I think much was said last week and we're not gonna see too much in the way of movement from that as well. Just to, to wrap up again on the calendar and, and to say Monday likely to be quiet, Tuesday and Wednesday pretty much the same other than the, the minutes uh, out of the RBA and FOMC, a couple of lower tier data releases. Yes, you've got API back in its Tuesday slot, Wednesday, uh, the DOE as well, but it's really Thursday and Friday where things start to get a bit more interesting here. Uh, quite a few numbers out on, on Thursday along with the ECB minutes. And then Friday, the manufacturing and services PMI numbers out of Europe and the UK, uh, which will probably be, if you were to choose one day to release to focus on this week, it's going to be that. You've also got Lagarde speaking on, on Friday as well uh, to, to wrap up. What could be an interesting back end to the week, um, just moving on to, to the charts, just to see how we have traded in the open. You can see gold coming under uh, a fair bit of pressure here, as safe havens are in general. So you've got T-notes as well, just going to bring this into picture. Coming to its lower part of the day, uh, obviously not a big move for T-notes, but for the morning, maybe it is. The Bund as well, touching uh, the lower part of the day. And here on the five minute, you can see that's the one, two, three, fourth time uh, that has asked of that S1. Stocks are happy. Stocks are on all-time highs. Risk on in the market. Uh, and that seems to be the way it's going to continue unless Trump pulls out uh, that hawkish card. Any questions as usual, please uh, do let us know. Hope you'll have a good trading day uh, and even better week ahead.